My name is John McKnight. Uh, I came to Springfield in 1859, uh, later joined by my brother, William. We came to Springfield to go into the haberdashery business. Uh, we started our own business in 1865 and met with some success. By 1870, our business was established and I became interested uh, in doing some land development. I partnered with Theodore Haynes, who was the brother of Tilly Haynes, well known in Springfield for the Haynes Hotel and the Haynes Opera House. Uh, we acquired 20 acres of land between Thompson Street and Winchester Park and started doing development on Thompson Street, Westminster Street, and Buckingham Street, a modest development. The McKnight brothers, along with Theodore Haynes, bought land on the north side of State Street and started building homes. Knight Brothers were responsible for developing much of this area into residential housing, but there were also vacant lots in between the houses that they put up. So this particular house was actually put up not by the McKnights, but by the Harris family in one of the vacant lots. Theodore Haynes had bought 20 acres of land between Thompson Street and Winchester Park. We felt that this was maybe a good time for uh, some suburban housing here in Springfield. The trolley had come all the way up State Street. And it looked like the city could expand out of downtown. So we started development in about 1870 of what became known as the McKnight Development. Uh, we started developing houses on Thompson, Westminster, and Buckingham Streets. Unfortunately, in 1873, there was a big depression uh, all through the country, and our development sort of came to an end. By 1880, things were much more successful, and we decided now in partnership with my brother William to expand. In 1980, we bought 200 acres of land uh, between Bay Street and the railroad tracks and set out to really make the McKnight development something very special. In reading about the McKnight brothers, it seems as though um, this is one of the first settlements that they uh, were involved in. So we had acquired this new land. My brother William was concentrating on building houses. My expertise and interest was the infrastructure and the overall look and design of the neighborhood. Uh, we initially set out all the streets, we designed the five parks to be an integral part of the neighborhood, and we set very specific rules for uh, building properties, building new houses. They developed what's called a garden district, an area that's very suburban, single-family detached houses, and when development finished about 30 years later, around 1900, there are close to 800 Victorian homes then in the McKnight district. We had about 800, 800 lots. We developed about half of them, built houses on about half of them, and sold the lots for the other half of the properties. We had very strict specifications. Houses had to be at least $3,500, doesn't sound like much, but it was a good deal of money, and up to about $15,000 for the houses built in the area. We required them all to be equally set back 
from the street, so you had a nice streetscape. In this way, we were developing a planned neighborhood, really one of the first planned neighborhoods. And some of this is a result of knowing that we had a lot of land and we wanted a very specific way for it to be. Uh, so the McKnight brothers were pioneers. I mean, they helped make the city of Springfield one of the first communities to really have a planned architectural model. The McKnight brothers built this beautiful neighborhood, but in addition they thought ahead and they created some small parks. As we developed streets, uh, the first ones we named after well-known towns in England, Buckingham, Westminster, Clarendon, these were English towns. Then as we developed further, we decided to name them all after uh, colleges in New England. The streetcar coming to uh, Upstate Street and ending at the corner of Princeton and Bay Street uh, was certainly important to the development of the neighborhood. We decided it would be a very good idea to extend the trolley, so we paid for the installation of bringing the trolley in Princeton Street and back down St. James Avenue, so it would run right deep down the middle of our neighborhood. What is important to understand is that McKnight was the first real suburb of the town-town area, all made possible because of the trolley. People could now get back and forth to all the business and industries that were in downtown were now much more readily accessible. Though houses here did have carriage houses and numbers of people did own horses and carriages, there wasn't the majority of people, so the trolley was a very important part of them coming. Well, the McKnight brothers uh, were very far-sighted in uh, setting up a neighborhood that was going to be serviced by the streetcars. One of the reasons we thought that McKnight would be a very successful development was Springfield was at a time of tremendous growth. Uh, 
partially because of the uh, end of the Civil War and just heavy industrialization that was going on in Springfield. In addition to the fact that Springfield is a crossroads of New England, where the railroads, the river, the highways all intersect in Springfield. So it was an ideal place for the people to live who traveled for sales, for business, and that this neighborhood could meet their needs, as well as meet the needs of the growing middle class. In addition to a growing middle class, with industrialization, there are a whole level of clerks and supervisors and managers and small business owners, medium-sized business owners. Up till this point, there was not a neighborhood that was designed for them. This was the neighborhood. 